My name is Jake Thompson Hair. Let me show you how to cut some hair. Um, today, what we're gonna be doing is I cut this um, kind of curtain fringe on this model a few weeks ago, but I wanna show you how to layer from the longest point, starting at the layers right through here, and we're actually gonna create a shag around this. So this is gonna be the starting position. We're gonna layer everything around this. It's gonna have some layers on the top. Um, but we're gonna work with, we might cut the length, we might not. I'm not really sure what I wanna do with that. But starting right now, we're gonna start the haircut right in the front. We're gonna start it on the left side. And then I'm gonna move over to the right side. So let's do this. So one of the things you wanna keep in mind when you're going to do a haircut like this is we're going to take a section that is gonna mirror our hairline right through here. And as it mirrors our hairline, so it's gonna have a little bit of the fringe and it's gonna go all the way down to the front of the ear. So first off, you can see where that fringe length is at right through there. And so we're gonna start the haircut right at that position and we're gonna layer everything around the face. And one of the things you wanna keep in mind as you do this is that I'm gonna push the hair forward like this. So I'm gonna stand behind me and I'm gonna push that hair just like that, okay? Now I'm going to start cutting all the way down, okay? Just like that. I'm gonna layer all the way around the face and I'm talking with the scissors as I move all the way down, okay? So you can see how that's gonna look. It's gonna open up that face. It's gonna be absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna work on the opposite side right through here and I'm gonna work that section and it's gonna mirror all the way. But one of the things I could stand behind me, but then I want to I want to cut the same way, so I would have to do this backhanded thing like this, which would actually be really super hard. So I'm going to stand right in front, right through there. And I'm going to cut along just like that. And as you can see, I'm cutting on the outside of my fingers, and I'm talking with my blades as I go down. And I'm going to cut all the way down, just like so, okay? Cool. See how that works? Simple enough, okay? Now what I want to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to come on the opposite side, right through here. Now this opposite side, we're going to work this forward. Now one of the things you want to keep in mind is that the more this hair moves back, the more the hair doesn't live forward, it lives right through here. So I'm not going to necessarily take this straight forward like I did before. I'm gonna take this a little bit down. Or I'm gonna leave it just a little bit longer because it's got hair that needs to travel back and you can see my guide right down through there. And I'm gonna work that. Now we're going to take this opposite side, right through here. And drag this forward, just like that. And it goes about to the top of the ear now. Stand right here in front. Comb this a little bit more instead of combing it down this way. Comb it a little bit that way, leave it a little bit longer, and cut that all the way down. Cut that all the way down. Absolute perfect. Cool. And you can start to see how that just opens up the face all the way around. Then I'm going to take all the way up to the top of this crown. And now my sections don't diagonally go back like this. I just go straight down. So now I'm going to push this forward just like that.
gonna be a little bit longer. Take this down, right through here. And I'm gonna work this to the side. Awesome. So that right there would conclude to how are you going to layer from your fringe, from the shortest point, this is a curtain fringe, so it's a little bit shorter, and then it V's around right through here. So now we're gonna layer, we layered everything around, taking diagonal sections like this, and then working everything forward, a little bit more down, a little bit more down, okay? Now what we wanna do is we're gonna layer through the top. Now layering through the top, one of the things is that we can also use that same guide that we had in front as a guide throughout the top. The, the, the really cool thing about this haircut, guys, is that this looks good on straight hair, this looks good on wavy hair, this looks good on um, all different like textures and types of hair. Because this is gonna give a lot of volume, this is going to give, if the hair's got a little wave in it, it's going to reactivate some of those waves because that weight is not gonna be there. And so as I take this up, one of the things Here's my guide right through the front. So now, I'm gonna take this up. We're gonna cut some hair off, okay? I usually always start in the back just to get rid of like that excess length because the hair will bend over the comb. And then I'll go in and I'll point cut just a little bit deeper just to kind of soften up some of that line through there, okay? As you can see, you know, it progresses so that line gets a little bit longer, okay? Now, I'm gonna take this back, here we go. Take all of this up, and same thing. We've got that, let's take that back to there. Cut that off, take that off. And then as that travels back, you can start to see as that has got like that nice kind of shaggish look to it. Now, I'm going to start cutting the left side, but I'm going to be standing on the right. So as I do that, let's move over here as I work this up. I'm going to take everything to my previous section. You can see my guide right through there. Cut that off, just like so. And one of the things when you're actually point cutting, you always like point cutting, and I'm sure you guys have cut yourself, but one of the things is when you're point cutting, you want to actually close the scissors down as you're moving out. That is one of the, the tips and the tricks to make it to where you're not cutting your finger. And the rest of the hair just didn't really reach on the bottom. So, as you can see, a shag is starting to come alive, which is awesome. I mean, I'm a really big fan of a shag. I think shags are just such a beautiful shape. And so whenever I'm cutting the opposite side, I want to stand on the opposite side. There's something that's easier about pulling to you instead of like pushing away. So if you can pull to you, and this is where you would actually use your mirror. So if we were right in front of the mirror right here, you would look in the mirror and you would wanna say exactly, am I directly right over the top of that section? And if I am, okay, then you can start to see your guide. And I know I'm not like going through and taking like precision sections because I'm gonna cross check this. And also, really at the end of the day, I'm, I'm really just looking for balance. So the most beautiful thing about cutting hair 
is that it's the detail work that you can really put into hairdressing. I love cutting hair, I love coloring hair, but the thing about, and I love styling hair, but when you, when you get done with a style, you've colored it, you've cut it, you've styled it, and then you're on to the actual detail work, the very end, that's the part that I really personally enjoy. I love it because things come alive then. You're personalizing that specific haircut, that specific color, that specific fringe to that one person. And you're really, at the, at the, you're, you're really taking into consideration face shape. You know, when you're consulting about color, you're looking at skin tone. You're looking at face shape as well. Do I want to diminish maybe the width that's in their jawline? Do I want to enhance the, um, do I want to enhance the, the portion of them having uh, beautiful, beautiful eyes? Do I want to bring that out to color? Do I want to hide anything? Right now, I'm just cross-checking everything. I'm just cross-checking it, looking at, looking at everything. Uh, I'm gonna be blow-drying this, and we're gonna be um, cutting everything dry. So, first thing you wanna keep in mind is you wanna use some sort of dual bristle brush. Um, it's got nylon and boar bristles. You're gonna get an ultra smooth finish because the bore is what's gonna get the tension and then the nylon is what's gonna kind of break through any sort of tangles. And you can see as I, when I started doing this, I started going in a flat wrap motion. So I was pushing the hair forward, back, left, right, all different directions to really get um, really just kind of like a nice smooth finish and using the round of the head. And then I went in to finish those ends and you can see I kind of pushed everything away from the face. Um, it's got a little bit of a bevel, it's got a little bit of like a roundness to it, but some of these ends are kind of like wisping and now, I mean, this would be, this is an absolutely, an absolute beautiful shape to begin with right now, but we're gonna go to, we're gonna go in and we're gonna detail it. Now, keep in mind, there are customers out there that would like more of a fuller finish like this, then you don't have to go in and texturize that much. But with this, it's a mannequin head, she doesn't mind. We're gonna go in and really start to personalize this just for her, okay? So some of the things I like to keep in mind is that um, I like to use my scissor for this. I would go in with a texturizer. We'll do that on another haircut. I'll show you how to use texturizers. Um, but today I'm gonna be using a blunt scissor. I'm gonna show you how to work uh, and personalize this specific shape with what I have. So I'm gonna go in, I'm just gonna really start cutting out points. So I'm gonna cut out Vs or I'm gonna take out channels and those channels are going to make it to where that hair is going to be like PC. So this will be kind of PC, this will be PC, this will be PC. So I'm just going in and just cutting out specific hair and I usually cut underneath my finger and there, there's a reason for that because then I can, I can see what I am doing in here. So, cut out something like that, cut out something like that, and then cut out something like that. And you can start to see how it really just starts to come alive, meaning that that hair will just piece out so, so nicely. And you can create, you know, when you go to put in products in there, and you can start to see as some of that will really kind of start to flicker and open up a little bit through there. And again, when you start to personalize, a lot of things I take into place, I take in face shape. Face shape is super important to me. And then from there, I'll take into hair texture. So what is their hair texture going to allow me to do? And all of those things, are, are things that I, I learned over, you know, doing hair X amount of years. I've been doing hair for almost 30 years, but I learned those, you know, trial and error. So with that, I created this channel because I love hairdressers. And I created this channel because I wanna help hairdressers grow. I've seen a decline in hairdressers that start in the industry, and then hairdressers that are still in the industry five, even 10 years down the road, they either get super discouraged or they get to a point to where 
it's too hard for them. You know, it's too hard to build a clientele. And I hate to see that. I want to see hairdressers thrive. So I created this channel um, because I want to share with you my tips and tricks to what has made me successful and what has kept me in the industry these like almost 30 years that I've been in the industry. So stick around, subscribe. You don't have to smash that button. Just lightly tap it. Like tap it guys, just tap that button right there. But I'd love for you guys to stick around. There's a lot of cool stuff. We'll be releasing videos quite often. Everything from classic hairdressing to avant-garde to um, talking about how to build your business in the salon and everything in between, you know? Might go live, you know, might do some lives for you. Either way, there's gonna be a lot of really cool, interesting things. So stick around, guys. And I'm starting to work around in a radial fashion. So I'm basically just taking pie sections and I'm working in between that and I'm just taking out bits and pieces of hair. Kind of like, I guess you could say, they're just like channels. Think of it like this. If it was gonna be like a Christmas tree, like there's the negative spaces between the branches, I'm cutting out those negative spaces. And when it comes down to texting, cutting texture, it's gonna be visual. It's gonna be a visual thing to where you look at it and you're like, okay, where do I need to take out a little bit more weight here? Where do I need to do a little less here? And then it's gonna be a feeling. So I'm gonna feel it and then it's a visual thing. Uh, I'm gonna do a video on the principles of texture and how to texture, when to, when is enough enough. And so be on the lookout for that video because there's a lot of hairdressers out there that ask, you know, how do you, like, when do you know, when do you say when when it comes to cutting texture? When is too much? When is not enough? And I'm in the process of developing kind of a little, little bit of a cheat sheet for that as well. So be on the lookout for that, guys. And if you're also new to my channel, go ahead and check out my Instagram page. We're gonna put that right over here. So be sure and check that out as well. And I'm gonna use you guys as my mirror. I hope you guys are really kind of digging how this is kind of coming alive. I'm really starting to like how a lot of this wave is kind of coming into, and this is really, and, and I, I know with this mannequin head, I could do this curly and it would come out like super, super beautiful as well. Very shaggy, very full in this area. Um, there's actually another video I have on my YouTube channel where I did a very, very similar haircut. It was on blonde mannequin head. This is more blown out smooth. Um, maybe on another video, I'll show you guys how to do this curly. Because a lot of times people don't really know how to do curly hair. So one of the things that I'm gonna be doing right now is cross-checking. So I'm cross-checking to make sure, there's a little bit of a long piece right there, but I'm going to be looking at now balance. I'm gonna be looking at the balance of the actual weight I've taken out from side to side. And then I'm going to be looking at the actual shape I cut as well. And I'll be the first one to admit, you know, I'm not a Vidal Sassoon disciplined hair cutter. I'm really not. I mean, I've been very inspired by the likes of the Muscolo brothers, Orbe, people like that. And even Orbe himself is somebody that, he's, he's a very freestyle uh, styler. You know, he, he is somebody that I've looked up to for years. So my style is kind of a, a mix of my own. So now I'm taking this up. This is gonna be the back section. You can see it's a little bit kind of shapeless in there, but I don't really want to cut the length just yet. I really like how that length is looking. You know, I think how that how that looks is I'm re it's really starting to come alive. I'm going to take a little bit more weight out of this area right through here. And as you can see now, that back area is a lot looser in this area. And so I removed a lot of that bulk right through there. And so now it's a little bit more even between here and the bottom. There's no heavy spots right through there. So we're gonna work with 
the length that we have in the front and then the length we have in the back because I feel that everything falls super, super nice. So now if you were going to, you know, it falls really nice around the face, it falls really nice above the ears, and then it falls really nice in the back. And I'm not even gonna touch the length, right? I mean, it's a mannequin head. I like, I personally don't wanna go in and cut a really blunt line. I think that that would kind of take a little bit, I mean, you can do that. If I was gonna go and do this in the salon, and those ends were a little wispy, I would maybe bring those up just about an inch. I wouldn't bring them up too, too much. Here, let's actually do that. So if I do that, I'm really just gonna slightly remove just a little bit of hair there, just to kind of clean that up, just to get a little bit more of a structured line, not a ton. You know, I, I like how that length is looking, I don't want to cut, I just don't want to cut a ton, you know? I like that length. That length is what gives it character to me. It's what, it's what personalizes it for me itself. And so I'll just take just a little bit of hair there. Just a little bit. As Bob Ross would say, you know, we're just gonna paint a little tree right in there. Just a little tree right in there. You know, I mean, he's sculpting and he is, he's sculpting with paint. This is our canvas, hair is our canvas, so we can, we, we can twist it and mold it and shape it how we need to shape it. So, and again, I mean, I really am digging what we've done. So as far as like that, that fringe goes, and as far as like what is happening through there, I really hope you guys are starting to like what's happening take just a little bit more bulk just right out of that front area so it doesn't like doesn't like look too bulky right behind those those eyes right up into that area so to recap we have this curtain fringe in the front we actually went through and we took a section that mirrored the hairline and then we pushed everything forward. We stood on, on the left side, we stood behind her and we cut. And then on the right side, the right side, we stood in the front and we cut down. And then we took another section here, mirror, mirroring that, another section here, mirroring that, and so on until we got to the top of the crown, working those sections forward. And then we layered throughout the top. So we took our guide right through here and we layered through here, just like that. And basically it goes from short to long. Blue dry that, did a flat wrap, used a dual bristle brush, bore and nylon, and then we smoothed everything out, not too much volume at the root, then kicking away from the face, a little bit of twists through the, through the mids and the ends, and now we're gonna finish this off. So let's finish this off with a little bit of product, and I'm gonna use the same product I used to actually blow dry and it's a featherweight balm from Orbe. It's amazing. And so I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna to start to scrunch and put some product in there just like so. And like anything, as I'm starting to style, I really just, I'm using my fingers a lot I'm starting to kind of build some of that volume. I'm starting to build um, some of that texture. And you can start to see, when I started to cut that texture into it, you can start to see the airiness of some of these PC pieces coming into the hair. And this is what personalizes it for me. And I use a blunt scissor to cut the whole thing. You guys like this? Hit the subscribe button. Again, you have to lightly tap it. You don't have to smash it. Just lightly tap it, okay? Hope you guys dig that. Stay tuned next week. We've got some other really cool stuff for you. My name is Jake Thompson Hair. Thanks for checking it out. We'll see you next week.